update 1.13 for Gran Turismo 7 brought many updates most significantly for me there is an update with the car physics specifically with rear end grip many people complaining with the lack of rear end grip on power certainly with the way it snapped oversteers in original Gran Turismo 7 on launch and they've gone a long way to try to fix this with this patch and what I'm going to do now I'm going to go through some of my nightmare tracks and combinations and see how the new physics update has changed things now so the first one deep forest with the audi r8 we know this car was a nightmare to drive we're going to try it out to see how it works now and into turn one lift off oversteer is still a thing however with the new physics engine the car has so much more rear traction on power through this very difficult section the rear will start to slide off throttle as you lift off but because the car has so much traction on power you can just add in a little bit of power to stabilize the car as you would have done in, in Gran Turismo Sport, for example. Now, what we need to really think about is whether this update, which adds a lot more rear traction, is, is it killing the game? Is it making the car too easy to drive? Or have all of the default setups now, because the physics has been, and I quote, corrected, or the algorithm updated for, for rear geometry, now because the game is is fixed does it mean that all of the default setups in the cars were too safe so the way i'm feeling with this audi right now is that when you do get on the throttle there is a lot of rear traction it feels like the rear diff acceleration sensitivity is probably a bit too high we've got that locking effect because there actually is rear grip in the tires and geometry instead of the car spinning out the car is actually gripping the rear wheels are locking and you're you're understeering on power does this mean that my LSD settings video is completely invalid? I don't think it does. I think every point I made in that LSD video is still valid. Just the amplification or the magnification of some of the points that I point out is probably going to be a little bit more, certainly on throttle now. And just generally speaking, after just trying this first car out, I actually started to wonder whether all the videos that I've made over the last two months are completely irrelevant now with the new physics engine and i don't i don't think they are i think they are still valid i think it just comes down to the magnitude of the effect of all of the things i've been talking about is going to be a little bit more or a little bit less the actual principles of all of the videos i've ever made i think are still valid those principles uh, are kind of derived from many different sims as well as uh, gran turismo 7 and the magnitude that you will now feel in Gran Turismo 7 is probably going to be a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on which setting you're changing. Next one we're going to try is the Alsace circuit experience in the Renault RS01. I did this in my controller versus wheel back to back and in second gear coming out the corners, this car was very loose, very difficult to control. And we're just going to go through and run turn one and see how it feels right now. Braking as we would normally do, turning in second gear, coming around the corner and just really get on the gas hard out the corner. And it, it sticks, it drives out the corner, it sticks. You can drive with so much more confidence. Now I say confidence because I'm pretty sure if you absolutely smash the throttle, you could still over rotate cars. We're gonna go through that a little bit later in the video. But what I found with the original physics engine is just there was no confidence in the car. It would snap. It would snap without warning and it would be uncatchable. Right now, it seems the car has a lot more rear traction and it gives up traction in a much more manageable way. I'm going to go and find a license test now that I found particularly difficult in the original physics engine. In 1.13, we're going to see how this works here. It's the BMW around Catalonia and the long sweeping right hand corner exiting. I found so, so difficult during this license test. And we're going to see right now, we're going to get on the throttle as we're going to go through this corner and we are going to over rotate. So you can still lose the back end. It isn't completely planted. It's not a everything understeers physics engine now. I think there, there is definitely a lot more rear traction, but for me, this test in the original physics engine, it just felt like the rear tires were on ice. It looked like, felt like it was running on the rims, not on an actual tire. We're gonna go through again and drive with a little bit more consideration. Uh, getting on the throttle, managing the throttle, managing the steering, 
and the car has a little bit of a nice drift through this corner here. To me, this feels nice to drive. As to the realism, I can't say for sure. I've never driven a BMW around Catalonia circuit, but from my experience from other simulations, this feels a little bit more like I'd expect to, to see in a racing game. Using the throttle to balance the rear movement, steering just to kind of catch the car, it feels quite good to me. And another license test that I found almost impossible in the original uh, physics engine uh, it was one of the early license tests, in fact, and it really kind of got me worried about Gran Turismo 7, in fact. It was the Fair Lady Z at Tsukuba through the kink, and I cannot remember how many times I tried this test, um, and it was very difficult. So we're going to go into this test now, and I'm going to actually forget what to do, really. Just miss my turning point completely. Run wide, fail the test. But we're going to go again. We're going to think that you actually do need to brake for that right-hander and get the car dialed in much better. And again, look at the throttle inputs. I'm having to manage throttle inputs. That The car isn't completely stuck. Coming through here, little lift, getting back on the gas. We are slightly running wide, but to the line. And that drove completely different to how I remember it to drive when I first did these tests on, I think it was probably launch day. Let me know in the comments below if you found this test very difficult uh, during the first a uh, few weeks of Gran Turismo 7. I thought this one was one of the hardest license tests. I went again, I tried to improve my time and it's still possible to just overdrive the car and spin out. This physics update hasn't made it like you've got infinite rear traction. Another significant change to 1.13 physics update is that the, the high speed behavior of the 908 Peugeot is so much more stable through Porsche curves here we are flat out, we can turn in with a lot more confidence and it just so much better. I don't know if they've changed the default setup or the aero balance, uh, but I was able to complete a full lap in three minutes, 13 seconds, which is four seconds faster than I did previously with the uh, uh, 1.12 and, and prior updates. Having said that though, this car still feels ridiculously grippy at high speed I, I can't imagine in real life going through Porsche curves flat out in sixth gear I've watched some onboard laps from Le Mans some 908 laps and that I mean they lift they, they downshift twice through the first part of Porsche curves and yeah I, I think the high downforce cars just still have a little bit too much downforce for me and any physics test and evaluation would not be complete without trying the absolute boat around Nordschleife. And instantly when I tried this, exiting this first corner in second gear, you have the confidence to press the throttle. Un unlike before where if you're in second gear, you need to be very cautious on corner exit. If you know about my uh, Nordschleife pace notes, I said caution on corner exit 100,000 times for sure. Uh, but now, you can actually get involved you can go and race the car you can drive the car hard out the corners and look right now we are racing the ghost in fact we've got a great exit we are beating the ghost i know how fast that ghost is around the nordschleife and now i feel like i've got the grip and confidence to compete and keep up with that ghost i actually noticed when i watched the demonstration ghost they use traction control whether that was to compensate for the lack of, of grip on corner exit who knows uh, but now this circuit experience, it, it's got a whole lot easier, guys. There is a lot more rear grip. It doesn't mean to say this has become an easy circuit experience. It is still incredibly hard. Most of the challenge with this circuit experience is actually just remembering the track and just getting your lines correct. But now you will suffer a lot less from a slight snap of oversteer when running in second and third gear on corner exits. So with this physics update, for me, my opinion is that it feels like they have fixed some underlying problems with the physics engine. Certainly with regard to rear traction on throttle, and they, they've, they've admitted that in their post. They've said they've fixed or updated an algorithm regarding rear geometry. What that's done is it's given a lot of cars a lot more rear grip on, on power. Does that mean it's not a simulation anymore? It, it's hard to tell. The, the word simulation is a very, very difficult thing to quantify. Just because something is hard,
doesn't mean it is a simulation. A simulation needs to accurately represent something in real life. Whether that's done through fully simulating the whole suspension geometry, simulating the molecules of fuel going into the engine, or whether it's done based on a, a mathematical calculation, the end result should be that it feels like it does in real life. And for me, the way the rear traction feels on exiting these corners, it feels much more believable, much more like I've seen in GT races, much like more like I've seen uh, driving a road car. And I think what's happened now is the physics engine is fixed, but people's default setups or people's personal setups that were highly tuned to a physics engine which was necessarily broken those setups had a lot more rear traction on power they they were focused on their setup overcoming a physics engine deficiency now that deficiency is fixed the setups on the cars may need to be adjusted to allow the cars to drive again to, to get some on power rotation back into the cars let me know what you think in the comments below this is a very interesting topic i'm, I'm very very interested to hear your feedback and your thoughts on the 1.13 physics engine update if you've had some challenging circuit experiences then it would be really good to go and revisit them give them another shot you might have a whole lot better chance of getting them completed exiting this corner here on the entry to the carousel i was feeling pretty good uh, i was running good lap times i was actually listening to my own pace notes but please remember to take caution. The physics engine has improved rear grip, but it doesn't have infinite traction. You can still lose the car on corner exits. You can still lose a car going over the bumps. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm always interested to hear what you think. If you have enjoyed the video, hit that like button. If you found it useful, then let me know in the comments below. Hit that subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget that bell icon to be notified whenever we upload a new video. On screen right now will be a link to a video which you may find interesting. Thank you very much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.